decided to record this album live because me and Callum had a wee chat about it and it's really down to the fact that we both preferred this live energy that is not created by stacking individual musicians on top of each other down in a click track. Really every take we've done on the album has been different. We wanted it to be a band as one. We're more, really we're capturing the energy in the recording rather than just five musicians thrown in a room seeing what they can do. I would think we're, we're more of a band. It's been good fun doing it live. This has been different but I think it's better, it's a better way to approach it. It's less kind of clinical and it's all, it's more about vibe and more, and there's more energy in, in the recording, which is a great descriptive word. Yeah. Mm. You know. and this is the band's debut album. They're more organised than I've ever been in any band that I've recorded with so far, uh, which is an amazing thing and credit to them, it's, it's paying off already with the tracks that we've laid down. I really wanted to be involved in some way with the kind of pre-production of the music. I got to meet up with the band and suggest some ideas, uh, which some of which they took on board, others they tried and didn't want to do, and that's all good, that's all part of the process. Uh, and I, I love that side of it. So I noticed that there was a lot of excitement uh, about trying to find ways to link the old music with the new music, which is really, really what a successful crossover recording needs to be. We chose Castle Sound Studios in Scotland because it's the, one of the most well kitted out studios in Scotland, if not Britain. And we also loved the engineer that was there, Stuart Hamilton. I've worked with him before and his speed and his knowledge of mics and instruments and acoustic instruments is phenomenal. He really knows how to work a good sound out of bagpipes and fiddles and how to mix that with a kind of deep, rich drum and bass sound as well. Mark and Angus came into the band in January 2013 at the Celtic Connections Festival Club and they brought a whole new scope to what we were formerly used to. And they really had not much experience in traditional music until they met us. Um, but that was really inspiring for us all to, to be sharing ideas and sharing music and sharing culture. Mark and Angus work really well together as well. They've, they've played so much in other bands uh, together that they really are one. I feel like I've learned a lot from having them on board, making a little bit of a, a fusion, a crossover between trad and jazz, which has been good fun. But that goes the other way as well. Me and Angus have loved getting involved with trad music because I had, certainly hadn't done a lot before. It's nice to actually play, just play folk music and we feel we should learn the tunes and learn the tradition and kind of, so it's kind of a, a back and forth maybe. Yeah. Working with Scott's great, he's a really uh, enthusiastic, excitable uh, little ball of energy. He really knows what he wants and he's happy to tell you like his ideas or if you do something he's like, no like this. But he also loves hearing from everyone and knowing what they want to put into the band. He loves filthy grooves. Uh, but he loves making sure that himself and Mari are like nailing the tunes right solidly together. And it's just a really, it's just really nice to work with. One of the other things that's I found really uh, commendable and impressive is not just his playing, but his readiness to record on this album. He's not just prepared in the way that he knows what he's going to play. He's also prepared himself sections where he's improvising what he's playing, and each time we hear him doing a take, there's little changes happening. I like the idea that I don't know what a player is going to give me if I'm listening to it. That's something you don't find on the pipes very much. Uh, it's quite a rare thing and uh, it's exciting and it's definitely going to be one of the main features for this album. This is the Tarin booth. It smells of Tarin, which is lovely. Well, at the start of the band, it just started off with me and Mary. Um, and Mary Neuron through a few various projects so she asked him to come along to one of the rehearsals. They came along first time I met him and I couldn't believe this guy's laugh. It was the most craziest laugh I've ever heard in my life but I ended up being best of friends since then and uh, his planes came on in copious amounts since then. He's only actually been playing guitar for like four years or something like that. Um, he's a first study violin player but we couldn't believe it when uh, he's, they came along with Mark and Angus being there and they just managed to learn so much since then. Mary is one of my favourite fiddle players in the whole of Scotland. She's got a beautiful tone and she's just got an amazing sense of rhythm and feel that no one else really has in my opinion. We've worked really hard together to create a really tight 
pipe and fiddle ensemble. It's taken us a lot of time but we feel we've been working on it so much that we've really managed to, to put it down well on this album. She's just a great fiddle there. She's just, she's just magic. One of the cool things that's been, I guess, developing over the last few weeks is that we've got to hear Mary's idea uh, for the string section because we'll have her playing at the front on the fiddle lines, but also it, it'll be uh, extending out with the, with the string section coming in certain places. I think that's one of the many kind of exciting ideas that's been put into place for the album. <laughs> no, Mary, can you just seriously, we're thinking at the end of the track just to do a wee sheep nose going, Debbie da and Debbie da and Debbie da dump. Meh. <laughs> just give us one. <laughs> one more, one more. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> That's a take. And we've also been very lucky to have uh, guitarist David Dunsio uh, to come in. He's laid down some extra guitar parts on various tracks. He was mainly doing a, a solo feature on uh, one of our tunes called Gordon McCready's. It was funny because we, we listened to this tune so many times and done it live and there'd been a whistle solo and stuff and just so excited to have Davey in and finally do it with a guitar solo. He's just one of the most, one of the most amazing musicians I've ever played with, and don't tell him, but I'm kind of scared of playing with him. <laughs> Maybe it was amazing. Zero mistakes. mistakes. It was great because uh, once Davy had put his his lines down, and um, the band went back into the studio and uh, took on a new track with kind of restored vigor and energy, and uh, those kind of moments are. You know, you've got to really cherish them. Bye, David. We didn't get to say bye, so thank you so much for being a pop icon. So we recorded the whole album live, but decided to put the strings as an overdub um, on top. And we got in Graham McKenzie, Alice Allen, um, and Liam Brawley to, to play for us, which was great. And Mary McKinnon, um, our own fiddle player, also did the other violin part. Um, so the, the strings came in, they had their parts and totally nailed it in a, a recording day in Castle Sound. Brought a new level to the to the record because Mary had been trying to do the string parts on her own just with the fiddle um, and with some effects pedals. But it was so nice to have real players playing live together in a room and really capture that magic. So we're really we're really grateful for for having these people on board because they do add something special to to what we do. We also brought Callum in as a producer because we knew his knowledge and musical experience would really help our arrangements. He's not only a great musician and got a great ear but he's really enhanced our performances on this album as well. I think the way to achieve that is for when it, it's open enough that when it hits the A part again, it just tightens right back in to that, uh, that groove. He's a great guy for crossing over different genres. and He's already had a lot of experience with that and we really wanted to take that into our own arrangements and into our music as well. Not only that, he's just a lovely guy and he's got great positive energy. We were in doing the takes and we were really struggling at points, feeling tired and he would just come in and just give us a wee smile and that really made the difference to a lot of the music. And it, it... Sounds great. It's a good yeah. point for us just to get some air and yeah, I think so. a glass of water or whatever. Yeah. A bit of water. outside gin and tonic. Go that and get a pint. Excellent. Go yeah. get a pint, come back. Right. <laughs> that was good. Did that feel alright for you? Yeah. Scott uh, got in touch with me and asked me if I was interested in being the producer for their album and uh, I was instantly very excited to get involved. I had a kind of idea of what their vibe was. 
The thing that had really changed since I first heard the band play is that they'd had the addition of the drum kit and the bass and things had really started to go a different direction. Far more crossover was becoming apparent in the arrangements uh, and that was exciting. Uh, I love all that stuff. Uh, so I thought, yeah, okay. It was like Barry White was singing to me. <laughs> Over candlelight. Um, just after we recorded the album, we got some uh, funding from Creative Scotland to choose who we want to get to mix the album. So we decided to choose um, Tyler Duncan. Just travelled out to, to Michigan in Ann Arbor to go and see him in his little studio in the basement of his house. Tyler Duncan was the man who uh, was behind the whole Olam record, um, and that was definitely one of my favourite records of last year. Hey, my name is Tyler. I'm mixing the Scott Wood Band record. I'm having a blast working on this music. It's a really high energy and dynamic and very detailed and incredibly um, cared for. The musicianship is, is extremely high. I think it's just a very, very joyous record. Scott's kind of a lunatic and he flew over to Ann Arbor just across the ocean to like hang out with this total stranger for the week. Um, and it's been a blast. I'm just like can't wait for this music to get out there. When Tyler mixed it, he sent it over to, to LA, to Devin Kerr, to get it mastered. Um, and Devin was also involved in the Olam record as well, so I really wanted the two of them, a nice little pair, to work together on the record. Well, as soon as we kind of came back from mixing in America, we decided to, to start working on an, another record already. I think this album we've been quite safe with, um, keeping it in the, the trad genre still. Um, but I feel for the future that we can really pull it and take it to a new place.